Hi, Happy New Year. This video will show you five free add-ons for FS 2020. We'll start with a scenery add-on. I haven't profiled much in the way of scenery for a while, but this particular one holds a special place in the hearts of a lot of Microsoft Flight Simulator users. For many years, the default location to start a flight from in Microsoft Flight Simulator was Miggs Field in Chicago. As such, it holds a special place in the hearts of users of Microsoft Flight Simulators. Sadly, in 2003, the airport was abruptly closed and converted into a city park, upsetting the local aviation community and ultimately the flight sim community as well. Looking at Google Maps, we can zoom into Miggs Field located at the edge of Lake Michigan waterfront near the downtown Chicago area. Switching over to satellite view and zooming in, we can see that Miggs Field has been converted to a park. Here's the original now defunct control tower that survived the demolition. They have the Huntington Bank Pavilion Amphitheater over here for concerts and the like. I'll grab the location here from Google Maps by right mouse clicking on this landmark tag and clicking on the GPS coordinates. Now in FS 2020 I can drop the GPS value into the world map and start a flight. And here we are. I'll switch to drone so we can have a look around. As you can see from here from this drone view this location that used to be Miggs Field is indeed now some kind of city park and estuary. Enter developer Guillermo Zulueta and his incredible recreation of the original Miggs Field. Guillermo has invested over 100 hours of time developing this scenery mod and the quality of this mod is professional and top notch. He offers two versions of the mod currently, a free version and a paid version. The paid version is currently on special at 7 euros or about $8.60 US. It's regularly 10 euros, but even at 10 euros or about $12.30 US, this mod is a bargain in my opinion. While my videos on add-ons always focus on the free variety for this mod, I'm going to be looking only at the paid version of it. It's so cheap and such great professional quality that I think it's really a bargain and this developer deserves your support if you use the mod. The free version is really to give you a taste of what could be if you upgrade. Once downloaded, just drop the contents of the zip file into your community folder and start your sim as normal. I'll use the same GPS coordinates that I had from Google Maps to get to the location and here we are. We can see that the mod fully integrates and recreates the runway and all of the ramp areas around it on the world view just like any other airport. Very nice. The included readme file indicates that ramp 0 is a hangar that you can start out inside of so we'll select that and start our flight. Well it looks good so far. Starting the flight here we are in the hangar that is fully built out, tons of detail, a nice skylight, rolling tool chests, what an awesome banner. Chicago, the aeronautical center. What a great bit of detail to add here, I love it. Looks like AC units and windows that line the top of the hangar wall. The fire station and tower exterior have tons of details. The vehicles look amazing as well. Exterior of the terminal building looks great. The runway and everything else looks better than I ever remember seeing it in a sim, that's for sure. Switching over to night, all of the lighting looks correct as well. Proper taxi and runway lights. The ramps are nicely lit as are the hangar areas. Excellent. Vassy lights on the approach and they work too. Let's switch to sunset and have a look at the tower and terminal. The exterior of the tower is nicely detailed. Looking inside, we have multiple ATC stations and the airport diagram up on one of the monitors. That's a really great touch. Again, great attention to detail in this mod. One of the best looking scenery mods I've seen for FS 2020. It's a great view from up here as well. Let's head over to the terminal building and have a look around. The exterior details are excellent, great looking textures. 
Going inside, there's a ton of details. I love the way the floors were flecked as well as the chrome accents. Venting machines, a really great detail in here. I love the mural of a giant photo of Migs Field. Helicopter tour ticketing desk, again, another great detail. The chairs, the wall mosaic tile, and the cylinder lights all look excellent. I love the stairs and the railing as well. This is all top-notch texturing and geometry work here. Details like the fire extinguisher and the wall outlet really make a huge difference in these kinds of scenery add-ons. The city seal and airport name emblazoned on the doors is really a nice touch. Again, the vehicles look excellent as well. Just superb work by Guillermo. Sitting here at the departure end of Megs brings back a lot of very fond memories. It's truly sad what happened to this airport in real life. I'm really pleased that Guillermo brought it back to life like this and he truly outdid himself. Seven euros for a limited time, folks. Guillermo is practically giving this away. This next item is not software, but rather aeronautics learning materials that you can get for free. Unlike most video games, a flight simulator represents a very technical subject. It's one of the things that I love about simulators like FS2020. There's so much to learn in such a technical simulator. However, it can be overwhelming when you're new to this type of application and start to see the number of topics to learn in order to become truly proficient with it. Luckily, we have the internet to come to the rescue. Pilot Rod Machado authored a great book titled Ground School for MSFS 2002. It'll teach you the basics of aeronautics and flight. While written for FS 2002, most of the material contained in his book will still apply to FS 2020. You can get a copy of his book for free over at the Internet Archive. There's a link in the description for it. On the right side underneath the book viewer is a set of options for downloading the book in whatever format you like, PDF or EPUB, etc. If you're new to simming or even an old hand at it, I highly recommend this free book. Speaking of free books, a couple of my favorite books are these two that are published by the FAA. If you're not familiar with these publications, you might think that these books are going to be dry, poorly written government manuals. They're very clearly written, authored by passionate pilots interested in giving the most accurate and useful portrayal of the subject matter. The illustrations are beautifully done, colorful, and very clear and easy to read. Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge and the Airplane Flying Handbook are truly wonderful resources and essential reading for anyone that wants to take their sim experience to the next level. Another of the FAA manuals that I highly recommend is the AIM or Aeronautical Information Manual. You'll find links to free PDF copies of all of these publications in the description. While it may seem like an overwhelming amount of information to digest, just take it a bit at a time. There's no rush. Have fun with it. Embrace this wonderfully technical discipline that's not going to get boring anytime soon. While there seems to be a plethora of moving map applications out there for FS 2020, I wanted to make sure you're aware of this one for a couple of reasons. My preferred moving map is Little Nav Map, as you may have guessed if you're a regular viewer on my channel here. I've linked to my videos on that application in the description if you haven't seen them. Developer Skelt over at FlightSim.to has developed a very slick moving map utility called FSPM for FS2020 that integrates right into the FS2020 menu unlike any of the other moving map products out there. Secondly, it offers a teleport option. I recently posted a video on how to use SLU in FS2020. It's linked in the description. I likened it to a teleport option in the sim. While you can indeed move across the map very quickly with SLU, 
FSPM allows you to move to a specific location heading and altitude on demand. Once you download it and add it to your community folder, it'll appear in your in-sim menu like this labeled FSPM. I have the sim paused here for this demo. Click it and you'll get a moving map showing your location. You still have your GPS map with the V key. In the upper right is a wind speed and direction indicator. Below that is a button with an aircraft icon on it. This is to zap you back to where your aircraft is actually located on the map in case you move it out of view. Below that is a toggle that will show you airport locations, VOR beacons, and airspace indicators. It takes a moment to populate that information when you click the button. Click it again to hide that information. The left side gives you details about your flight and the ambient conditions of the world at your location. You can hide or show the panel like this. Zoom out and you can see the whole world. Zoom into a location, click on it to go there. Put in your desired altitude, airspeed, and heading, and poof, you're there. Once you're at your desired location, you might want to pause the sim and wait for the sim to fetch the textures for that part of the world. Sometimes that can take a moment or two. I recommend using the real pause feature that I made a video about. It's also linked in the description. You want to go to space? Put in 200,000 for altitude and go there. This is a really slick capability. Sometimes I'll fly to location to get a look at some landmark and once done, I have to return to the main menu and reset the flight to go to my next point of interest. Not anymore. Now I can just teleport to that location directly using this mod. It's a very handy feature. I'd love to see them add the ability to input the GPS coordinates and teleport to that location as well. Maybe they'll add that in the future. This next application is also a favorite. Developer MRACKO of Corone Studios has created this application. It creates a web server that runs on your machine alongside your copy of FS2020. You get FS2020 up and running first, and then once it's up and running, run the MCA application. I used Alt-Enter to take FS2020 out of full screen mode here, and then I run the MCA application. Once MCA is running and talking to FS2020, it shows the IP address and the port that I'll use on my iPad, so I just get that information from right here. In this instance, it's 192.168.0.84 and the port is 4000. Now I click on FS2020 and hit Alt Enter to restore it to its full screen glory like so. Note that it will run on any device with a web browser. iOS, Android, anything, even a game console. Unlike a lot of other moving maps, this one doesn't need an app to run on the target device. I like that. Now I start a flight and once that's running, I pause the flight and go to my iPad and enter the IP and port number that I got from the MCA program just as you see here. First, I'm presented with a moving map. Across the top are a number of buttons allowing us to control the nav radios, the comm radios, the autopilot and the light panel. I've not had great results with the map, but the other controls have worked well for me. Selecting the nav controls allows us to control nav 1 and nav 2 as well as the automatic direction finder. I'm not sure who uses the ADF anymore, I always struggle to find an active NDB to use it with since they're all going away these days. So I can set standby frequency and swap it to the use slot just like you would on the radio. You have the same types of controls over on the comm page, but a slight difference in function is that you have to choose which comm radio you're affecting with this comm transmit toggle. And you also have control over your transponder's squawk code. The autopilot page allows you to engage or disengage the autopilot using this huge button at the top here. 
Below that, you've got access to all of the usual controls such as nav mode, heading, and altitude hold settings. With altitude, you must use the set alt button to transmit the settings to the sim. The panel page lets you control all of the lights in your aircraft. You can toggle all on or off if you like with the top button, and that's handy if you've got three or four lights on, you just hit one button to turn them all off. It also offers heat and de-ice controls here as well. Finally, on the other page, you have landing vertical speed details if you have these set, and below that is a simulation rate. This is nice because while you can set this in the sim, there's nothing in the sim to indicate how you have it set. And this is also where the developer's credits are given for the app. I find this app to be super helpful when flying since I can quickly set values in the sim without having to remember or look up a bunch of keyboard assignments. Our last item today is for one of my favorite aircraft in the sim. The first time I ever rode in a general aviation aircraft, it was in a Cessna 152 rental. We flew out of San Gabriel Airport in El Monte, California. It was piloted by my best friend. That would begin a number of wonderful adventures in the sky in the 152 for me over the ensuing years. Especially after my friend bought one as his first aircraft. Sometimes called the moped of the skies due to its lackluster performance specs, it's always held a special place in my heart. After all, the journey is the destination and we were never in a hurry. This last add-on is the C152X Realism mod developed and maintained by developer DRF30Q over on GitHub. Click on the link in the description, then click on the green code button on that page and select Download Zip. Put the contents of that zip file into your community folder, and that's it. Taking a quick look at some of the features are increased stall speed that's more reflective of the actual aircraft. Engine performance has been increased. Fuel gauges are properly calibrated now. Flight tested to verify climb, cruise, service, ceiling, fuel consumption, etc. in accordance with published information. A veritable horn of plenty of more updates to improve the realism of this aircraft in the sim. The sim provides a great base implementation of the aircraft, but it's far from reflective of the actual aircraft and this mod really takes it to that level. If you're a fan of the 152, this mod is a must-have. Caveat emptor, though, you'll be well served to remove this mod from your community folder prior to running the sim after any updates or patches. It's been known to have issues after the sim gets updated. The developer is pretty fast getting fixes published, but better safe than sorry. I've included a link to the pilot owner's manual for the 152 in the description for those that want to see what is getting updated according to the official specs. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you saw something here that was new for you and of interest. If you liked the video, please give it a like, that really helps these videos. And until the next video, take care.